yards. He's third in points. Scott Goodyear hasn't won yet this year, but consistency in a second best qualifying effort yesterday has moved him to within 36 points of the leader, Buddy Lazier, who has two wins this year and can wrap up the title with a finish of 14th or better. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins, along with former Indy 500 winner Tom Sneva. Not only is he a former Indy 500 winner, but a two-time national champion, so you know, Tom, what's going through the minds of these three contenders. Well, they talk about mindset, I think helmet. That's what you set your mind in when you set in that race car. For two of the guys, it's pretty simple. They've got to go to the front and stay there. For Buddy Lazier, well, the math's pretty simple. Let's see, it's $100,000 to win the race, it's a million dollars for the championship. No matter what he says, there's going to be some conservative thoughts creeping into that psychic as, as this race develops. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's race. Greg Ray has won his ninth pole, making him the all-time pole winner in the series. Scott Goodyear hopes for the championship. Row two, Jeff Ward and Alan Zer Jr., the best starting position of his IRL career. Row three, the Orlando winner Robbie Buell and series points leader Buddy Lazier. In the fourth row, Davey Hamilton driving for a new team. Alongside will be Robbie McGee. Starting ninth, Tyce Carlson and the other title contender, Eddie Cheever Jr. Row number six, Mark Dismore, the defending champion of this race, and Jacques Lazier. Seventh row, Sarah Fisher, who began her IRL career here a year ago, and another rookie, Jared Schrader. Starting 15th and 16th, Shigeki Aktori and Ronnie Beachler, eighth in the point standings. Row nine, former series co-champion Buzz Calkins and freshman Sam Hornish. Tenth row, rookie points leader Ayrton Dari and Jimmy Kite. The eleventh row, Eliseo Salazar and a former winner here, Billy Boat. Starting 23rd, Stephen Gregoire, 24th, Scott Sharp. In the 13th row, Zach Morioka and Stevie Reeves. And in the 14th row, J.J. Yaley. Jack Arut is one of our two pit reporters this afternoon. Jack. Bob, there was no pre-race meeting. There was no inspirational talk for Buddy Lazier and his crew. In fact, they say they've done everything absolutely exactly the way they've done in the previous eight races. But there is one change, Vince Welch. All around their pits are these buttons that say racing for $1 million. Scott Goodyear and Eddie Cheever would like to have that bonus as well. They're going to be keeping their eye on each other on the racetrack, but they're also going to be keeping their eye on one another in the pit lane. Buddy Lazier is in the first pit box, Scott Goodyear is in the second pit box, and Eddie Cheever is in the third pit box. So not only will they keep an eye on 91 on the track, but also keeping yeah, an eye on lights. each team right here in the pit lane. No mistakes can be made in this area today. It could cost that team the championship. Bob Jenkins? The 2000 campaign is almost over. One of three will end the day as champion. We ask all three, what will it take to win the title? For me to win the championship, I have to have a perfect race. No mistakes. No mistakes in the pits. And Buddy has to have problems. And Scott has to have problems. But all I can control is what I can do. I think, you know, today, starting second to win the championship, we have to win the race today. And um, depending, obviously, where Buddy finishes and where Eddie finishes. But uh, right now, our goals are to go out there and run as hard as we can and win. We'll see what happens. We've got to have a, a mistake-free day. Uh, we don't need to win the race as much as it would be nice to win the race. We uh, refuse to accept the fact that we've won this championship until we win it, until the checkered flag drops. There is a lot on the line here today. We hope for a race similar to what we had in June. The, without doubt, best race ever in the Indy Racing Northern Lights Series. Certainly, the closest finish is Scott Sharp beat Robbie McGee by 59 thousandths of a second. 208 laps of racing as we decide the champion for the 2000 Indy Racing Northern great Lights play. Series. And the green is out. Greg Ray, the pole center, with a very slow start as Scott Goodyear goes to the front. And remember, he needs to win the race and lead the most points to get maximum points today. That's his only hope of winning the championship. Now, the title contenders have fluorescent orange on their roll bars and on their wings on the rear and the, the uh, front of the car. That's how you can tell them. But going for the lead right now is Hal Unser Jr. He's on top of Scott Goodyear. What's a little surprising is Greg Gray dropped back quite a bit, Bob, at the start of this race. He dominated practice and qualifying. Oh, a big, big wiggle from Scott Goodyear, and he was right there close with Buddy Lazier as the points leader now comes up to move side by side with Goodyear for second. I'll tell you one thing, the uh, conservative thoughts haven't exactly creeped into that psychic yet for Buddy Lazier. Vince, a 
an update on Scott Goodyear. Scott did not like the way the race motor ran in yesterday's final practice, so they made a motor change late last night, and Goodyear was nervous about it this morning before the race. Team owner John Barnes smiled about it, though, and said it's just a 208-lap leak check. I bet Scott doesn't feel that way. Well, these three drivers have moved out ahead of the rest of the field. Actually, Allenser Jr. now has about a half-second advantage on this battle for second place, and it involves first and second in the point standings. Lazier now at the high side of the racetrack goes for second place around Goodyear. Well, that was a little bit of a gamble to change the race motor uh, without having any laps on it and start that race fresh because these cars are so sensitive to setup that he might need that pit stop to make an adjustment handling-wise to get that car back where he likes it. Running back in fourth position is Robbie McKee and then Mark Dismore. Down to Jackaroo. Well, you wonder why Greg Ray may have backed off. It's not by design. The telemetry that the Menard team is receiving on pit road shows that they have some concerns in the engine compartment. They're trying to diagnostic it right now, but they're not smiling down here in Team Menard. Well, there you saw the group of cars that are racing the way we saw in the first race here at Texas Motor Speedway. But everybody now is getting spread out as we have completed six laps here. Allenser Jr. remains the leader. That's Sarah Fisher battling to the back of Greg Ray. We're on board with Jeff Ward for the A.J. Foyt team. Now on board with Mark Dismore. That is Jacques Lazier up ahead there. Jacques driving for Team Extreme here this weekend and doing a nice job so far. Robbie Buell moving to the inside of Tice Carlson in that all blue car. Tice is running back in seventh position. And there are the drivers that have advanced their position. And we understand that Sam Hornish in the unit in Bearcat Scanners car is smoking and one of the top rookie candidates who ran so well at Kentucky is apparently going to drop out of this race very, very early. Well, they've had a lot of motor problems throughout the weekend. And I was talking to Butch Meyer, Greg Ray's uh, engine builder, and he said, hey, these motors at 3.5 liters are pretty bulletproof. It's just a matter of how you tune them up. You try to lean them down to make horsepower, sometimes you can cause heat, and that hurts the reliability. Short lap 10. Al Unser Jr. leads this race. Now, he is carrying the Dracula paint scheme, part of Action Performance and Universal Studios' Monsters of the Speedway program featuring Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and the Mummy. You'll also see that paint scheme on some of the cars in NASCAR and the NHRA. Once again, there is second and third position, Lazier and Goodyear. Well, Goodyear is caught back up. You know, he's just feeling the car out, but he feels more comfortable now. He's got adjustments in the car that he can change the handling characteristics, both with the sway bars and a weight jacker. So maybe he's adjusted a little bit and got the balance a little closer to his liking, Bob. Now, whenever the uh, onboard radio is heard up in the upper right portion of your screen, you will see who it is. Now, a couple of drivers are having all kinds of problems here at the start of the race. Greg Ray and Jeff Ward, who started first and third, are running 24th uh, and 25th, respectively, at this time. Well, and Ward, being in the Foyt camp, that's one of the teams that's had a lot of motor problems this weekend. So uh, it, it looks like their luck continues. 11 laps have been completed. Alan Sir Jr. leads over Buddy Lazier and Scott Goodyear by about two seconds. Robbie McGee and Jacques Lazier complete the top five. In a race car like mine, the oil tank is right behind the seat. When the oil gets hot, you know about it. In California, the oil temp gauge was pegged at 340 degrees. Normal's around 220. The heat's coming off the oil tank behind the seat, burning your back. Man, you wonder if you're even gonna make it to the finish. But Mobile One never gave up. Other oils, they might have cooked. Instead, what got cooked was me. I love winning, but doing it this way, man, I tell you, like my crew chief said on the radio, we owe this one to Mobile One.
bad cheetah. See? That's why I'm not a cat person. When it's wet, Bridgestone worn tires can perform longer with this breakthrough. Unity AQ Advanced Tire Technology. Like a tire inside a tire. With extended performance rubber compound and dual layer tread. Even as it wears down, wet performance stays up. Better cornering. Quicker stops. Get wet performance that lasts with Unity AQ. Bridgestone, a grip on the future. The Indy Racing Northern Lights Series at Texas Motor Speedway on ABC Sports. Brought to you by northernlight.com. Just what you've been searching for. New Pennzoil Synthetic with Penze. It's rocket science for your car. Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most used words are hey, beer, meh. And Delphi Automotive Systems, driving tomorrow's technology. moving to the inside of Robbie Buell and Cheever is trying for the fifth position here. Allenser Jr. still leads. Buddy Lazier second. Scott Goodyear third and Robbie McGee is in fourth position and now this side-by-side -side battle for fifth between one of the title contenders Eddie Cheever there in the gray car and Robbie Buell who won the opener at Orlando earlier this year. The story however here in the first 17 laps of this race is the pole sitter Greg Ray. He fell a lap down and now is sitting on pit road. So the defending champion of the Indy Racing Northern Light Series who has had problems all year long is certainly not ending the season the way he had hoped to. And Bob you were wondering before we went to break what the problem was on Jeff Ward's car. Well it's not an engine. They put the car into sixth gear and it just won't pull. There's no power. So I think it's a combination Tom Sneva. Let's check in with Vince Well. Greg Ray and Team Menard made an unscheduled engine change after the final practice yesterday after some concerning oil pressure readings. They had wanted to go with the same engine throughout practice, qualifying, and the race as they had the two previous events, but that was not able to be accomplished today. So they were a little leery of this motor. Whether or not it's a motor problem now or not, we don't know, but they were leery of this motor coming in today. Despite the fact that Greg Ray is 11th in the point standings, he had, going into this event, led the most laps in the series, 299, but he won't lead any today. Now we have a much tighter battle up front as Buddy Lazier has caught up to within just a few car lengths of Al Unser Jr. Well, again, it's pretty surprising, but one way to be conservative in racing is go to the front. If you get caught in the middle of the pack, like uh, Lazier could have been if he was real conservative, uh, you're exposed to a lot of potential problems, Bob. But by running in the front, uh, your exposure is way down. And how much of a head game is being played? Uh, did Buddy want to go to the front as early as possible and say, guys, if I'm going to lose this championship, you're going to have to take it from me? Well, I'm not sure about that. I think Buddy might be a little bit surprised that the race pace isn't a little quicker than it is. And he just uh, got there by doing his normal stuff. Buddy, by nature, is not very conservative, Bob. And uh, trying to hold the reins back in is a little bit tough for Buddy. Well, after four consecutive defeats at the hands of the Titans, the Jaguars are looking for revenge. Can Jacksonville break the spell, or will Steve McNair in Tennessee continue to dominate? Monday, life, uh, Monday Night Football live at 9 Eastern and 6 Pacific, Monday on ABC. There you see again the top three, Allen Sir Jr., Buddy Lazier, and Scott Goodyear, as 23 laps has been completed. Well, let's go down to Jack and get more on the Greg Ray story. John Menard, they've taken the cowling off. What is the problem? Well, we got one cylinder that's dead. We don't know why yet, but... Uh... You know, obviously, it's a big disappointment. Well, that spells DNF in my mind. Let's check with Vince Wells. Just as Tom Sneaver reported that Buddy might have thought it would be a quicker race pace, that is indeed the case. Team manager Lee Koonsman said, we're surprised. We thought it would be at least a mile an hour quicker than what it is. So we're going to run in the front until somebody can catch us. Well, the uh, fastest car on the racetrack last lap was Scott Goodyear at 212.331. Everybody running in the 211, 212 range. So that's what we're dealing with at this time. Well, and if you follow him around on the end car, look how little he has to, little steering input that he has to put in that car to get around this racetrack. 
I mean, the racetrack, he's changing uh, directions by 180 degrees from one end to the other. And it's five, six, seven degrees is all he has to move that steering wheel, Bob. And now the leaders come up on the slower traffic. J.J. Yaley is ahead in the WorldBestBuy.com car. Stevie Reeves is just ahead of him. They're about to go a lap down, running in 23rd and in 24th. And now Jack Arood is with Sam Hornish. A very disappointed young man because Sam, after Kentucky, you really felt like this was going to be the place for you to shine. Yeah, we really thought that we were going to do well here. Uh, you know, we're not really sure what happened with the car yet. Something motor related. We're coming up for the start, and I hit the bump in four when I was shifting the gears. And caught a little bit of an over rev, but uh, not sure if it was that or not. But I mean, we had a quick car. We went to the front. You know, I recovered from that. We went to the front real quick and. The car was working good everywhere, so a little bit disappointing, but uh, I mean, the guys put a great car in me. PDM in racing has done so much for me this year, and I, all, all right, <laughs> thanks, Sam. This is a fellow, guys, that you're going to see run into the front a lot in his career. And now, first, second, and third are very, very close over in turn number four. Here they come through the corner onto the quad oval, and we're on board with Scott Goodyear, but up ahead, Buddy Lazier looks to the outside of Al Unser Jr., who's the leader and is leading for the first time since he led here in June. And Al Unser Jr. is driving just a little bit gingerly, fellas, because they're seeing some pressures in the right rear tire that they don't like. They've alerted Al to that based upon the telemetry and said, just use your head. I thought it was that Dracula cape causing more drag than he <laughs> needed, Bob. He's been dressed in the cape all weekend. In fact, was when he was introduced here to the... Uh, spectators before this outside, race outside side outside, by side outside. battle still there still there clear clear scott goodyear takes second from lazier but lazier comes back on the outside well, i don't think buddy's going to force anything at this early stage of the race he's just going to coast along here and see how it blends the race is 208 laps we have completed 31 at texas motor speedway in the finale of the indy racing northern light series There's a new motor oil made to take it. Introducing new Pennzoil Synthetic with Penzane. Penzane was developed for the space program and is used by NASA. Don't change your driving, just change your oil. Pennzoil Synthetic. It's rocket science for your car. Frost brewed Coors Light. Nice choice. Thanks. Nothing like some ice cold Rocky Mountain perfection to wet your whistle. Yeah, you sure know a lot about beer. C come here often? I haven't missed a game yet. Really? Whoa. Could this get any better? Wow. You're spilling your beer. She's a beer man. Your beer. Whoa. Let's get a move on it. Rookie. Stealth my truck. If you think Delphi Automotive Systems is just about racing, you're in for a big surprise. Because at Delphi, we bring a whole world of technology to you every day, like electronics and safety systems that we test on the track so it can benefit you on the road. In all, we do a lot more than you might have imagined. Delphi Automotive Systems, driving tomorrow's technology. Excuse me. Oh, that's in the big truck. Monday, who is this man? Look into his eyes. What terrible secret is he hiding that ruined this father's life? What did this madman do to this little girl? 2020 Downtown with a Chilling Mystery, Monday. Maybe this will get him interested. Welcome to the final race of the 2000 Indy Racing Northern Lights here. 